I was told this is one of the last places to get cheap land in the Philippines. I guess this is the island over there. So why are investors talking about this island? And is it really true what they say? Well, let's go find out. We just arrived on the small island of Samal, just across from Davao. Our goal was simple, to figure out if we wanted to live here in the future, and if we did, then figure out if we could find land and at what price. But there was a problem. Joy had a fever from all the travel yesterday. Luckily, we were in the perfect place to relax. We found a hostel, which didn't really feel like a hostel at all, called La Vida Hostel. At a super affordable price, too. And then I stumbled onto something that, quite literally, freaked me out. What the heck? But then Joy explained it to me. So these are bees. Made native bees. Then you harvest them. You have to get a little bit on their house. And then you put somewhere they will follow. Apparently these bees don't sting you at all. But Joy didn't want me to get too close. When they came in your nose, I think it's the one I heard. Oh, they want to go in your nose to... Oh, like, or, or in your ears. Because they think it's part of their home. We ended up resting most of the day until Joy felt better. But the mysteries of the island kept calling us, and we only had three days left to discover their secrets. Here we are in the little breakfast nook. And in the kitchen is Joy. The prices of most resorts are pretty expensive on this island because many Filipinos come here to escape the city heat and life. And foreigners are always coming and going as well. Well, we finished breakfast. We had a long conversation about different countries with one of the guests here. Is this their little personal garden? Joy was feeling better and back to her usual self. So we started trying to plan our investigation. We could drive around today to just like look at the different towns if you want. Apparently Samal had three main towns. It'd be nice to just kind of get a feel for the island. I mean, it's probably cheaper than just renting a motorcycle here. In addition to getting a feel for the island, we just wanted to ask the locals a lot of questions to get to the bottom of what made Samal so attractive to investors. I'm Nino. Nino. Hi. You have a resort and art gallery at the mm. same time. Nino and his father were really helpful, and they even drove us around and showed us properties and explained the island history and what they think is going to happen in the future and why it would be a good investment. Are those mangoes? Oh, papaya. papaya. The first thing everybody talked about was this mysterious bridge that's scheduled to be built about five years from now, and it's even on Google Maps right now. Apparently, once this bridge is done, a huge amount of tourism will increase to small, even more than it is already. It looks like a plastic chew toy for a dog. When they first started buying this land up, they would build out these barriers here saying, this is my private beach. But then the government said, wait a minute, the water isn't really private property, so if you really want to claim this beach as your own private beach, then you're going to have to rent it from us. And that's why you have all these broken down docks, because people don't really want to do that anymore, and plus it kind of ruins the coastline. Pina Plata, right? Pina Plata? That's the little town we're going to go into here in Samal Island. Hello. Here. That looks yummy. We got our chicken and pork, and our driver is politely waiting for us to take us back. The next morning we hired a friendly driver to take us around the whole island. We wanted to see all three districts, and we asked him to show us some land that was for sale. And Joy's going to translate everything. A lot of the islands in the Philippines have a problem with trash, but not Samal. It's very clean here. That's a definite plus for us. The first part of our journey took us to the city of Babuk, which is the biggest city, and it's considered the noisiest part of the island. And you can see why, too. There's a lot of people here, a lot of business, and it's where all the ports are. The roads were really nice and well-maintained all over the island, and the transportation was really organized. And because of that, we never really felt like we were going to get ripped off by the drivers. I think they did a really good job to taking care of this place. <laughs> They're building kubus. I guess this is the road to a little beach resort area. And now for our first stop, to check out a little private beach area that's for sale. We were really excited to see these great deals everyone was talking about. So all these are resorts? Yeah, 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 yeah. 400 square meters right here. And uh, and how much per square meter is it? 400 million. Nine, Nine million? pesos. All right. Serious? 
What's your name? I'm Dennis. Dennis. Okay, Dennis. Hello. So you're the tour guide. And who's this? Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Do you, you do real estate? Yeah. Okay. This is my uncle. This is your uncle. Okay, good. Good team. That's an intense fence. 14 million pesos for this? The whole thing. Jeffrey and Dennis were amazing tour guides, but it became clear that they thought we had a lot of money to blow. That line is the water, and then build these little stairs up there. This place really is long and skinny. It goes all the way down to the water. A zip line. <laughs> oh, that's, that's available? Right between the millionaire houses. It goes up there too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the places keep getting more and more exotic. And what's the price on this one? Even so, it was really fun and we learned a lot. So I guess it takes about three hours to drive around this island. It's a really nice cool temperature here. I'd say probably mid 70s to 80s Fahrenheit. Yeah, he said uh, if it's really summer, it's gonna like hot. But that's not really hot, like, like in Manila. And December, we had a really cold temperature here. It's like the day day, I think. So it's never like so hot that it's really miserable. Mm, the smells are really good right here. Cantina. We spent most of our time on the south side of the island and we headed towards Kapitian. Oh, they got boats. That's for sale too. Oh, because of the houses on it? Okay. Okay, 1,000, 1,200 square meters? It's inside the fence area? Yeah, yeah, inside the fence. Okay. Now at this point it was just getting silly. Why would anyone want the scraps of someone else's properties like this? And for that amount? This was all a far cry from the affordable prices that we hoped for. But we did love the feel of this little island. And if we had half a million in spare cash laying around, well, I could see how it'd be a good investment if you found the right property at the right price. He's saying you build a little tiny house on here, a little tiny nice house, and sell for double the value. <laughs> we were all hungry, so Dennis took us to a cheap little cantina in Capatian, and it turned out to be one of the most interesting and delicious places I've eaten at on the island. I love that the plates had banana leaves on them. Thank you for this food. Bless it to our bodies. Okay, I just wanted to say that this was some of the best food I've had. And I'm gonna try these. These are macaroni pasta. Deep fried macaroni pasta. That's a, that's a good snack. It's a good snack? Mm-hmm. Such a nice sound. Joy just made this fish that we just bought at the local market. Okra and then rice, and then my instant coffee. Overall, Samal was our second favorite island that we visited behind Chargao. There's something about a clean, small island that just feels like home to us. But I'm sure the future bridge is going to change the feeling of this place five years from now. So, I guess we'll just have to keep looking. <laughs>